All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Guardian training video here on the Ascension Diaries channel. This is done through my Patreon memberships. Every Patreon member of mine has an invite to these Zoom calls every month. We do a monthly workshop on the 18th with a topic of the month, and this month's topic was astrology. And I wanted to bring astrology basics to this channel and to the ever-loving and ever living intellectuals out there who want to learn and grow and perhaps enjoy my way of communicating. So I broke it down as basis, basic as I could for a frictionless experience or engagement with astrology. And I just have to preamble before we get started that astrology is a Oh, there's, there's a tricky word, words for this, but there's a lot of people and opinions. It's a, it's a P it's a science of people and opinions a lot of the time. And there's a lot of people and a lot of opinions. And there's a lot of people who've studied this very long time and who believe that their way of charting and watching the heavens is the best way. And I've had those conversations. I want to assure you through my education in astrology and what I aim to do on this channel often and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go with the mainstream popular version of astrology and that that particular type just for the sake of, I want to say, even cultural education because there is a massive boom of people learning their own natal charts and then participating in comedy like social engagements they're engaging in a deeper study and a lot of them who do get interested learn about the other mo mo models of astrology and realize that also time space is a little bit tricky to even understand and fully comprehend so there is always that little gray area and i just want to put that out there that i am aware that there is different styles and there's different ways of charting and I'm just doing the mainstream version because that is what is taking over and culturally will give people a foot in the door and I will be helping in this presentation, give more resources to continue the study and honor all the other charting of astrologies that I know, including we have the Mayan the Mayan charting and Mayan calendar over my shoulder over here, which is what I'm kind of moving into as my own personal study, but that's like astrology class number three. This is class one. So let's get into today's class, everybody. Thank you again for your interest. And if you want to join these monthly classes, simply go to my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries, sign up, and you'll be invited to these and other live streams I do. And I'll be happy to have you. And for this monthly educational fun thing that I like to create for our community. So here we go. It's time for the PowerPoint. Okay. So we have, I wanted to make this the most basic as possible also. So it's easy to read and we aren't getting into too many technicals, too many fine print. That's not the intention of this class. This class is to give you a really the skeleton in a way to kind of get you started and comfortable. I don't want to overwhelm anyone, especially because I know what it's like to feel new to this. So welcome to Astrology Basics by myself, Ascension Diaries. And this is Guardian Training, September 2023. Welcome and shout out to everyone who makes infographics about astrology and memes. I would say shout out to you too. And just upload them online. Wherever you upload them, they end up where they end up. But I'm grateful that you create art and you uploaded it online and educated some people. And here we go. I'm going to be utilizing some people's work to give you these bare bones in the order I think is the most logical. So why did we choose tropical astrology with Placidus houses? I didn't write that down, but that is another detail. It is... Those are trigger words. So just realize tropical astrology or is kind of like Western astrology as well. Those two words kind of merge together. And then the Placidus housing and houses is the style that the charts kind of show up as. And that is the most popular way to chart it. So in an app, 
it will often ask you what kind of charting do you want to do with your birth date and time and place. And you sometimes have to pick these settings. So just a heads up on that. Why did we choose tropical for this basics class? It is an entirely sun-based measuring system and is set upon the ecliptic. And the Western countries and English speaking people tend to have Gregorian 12 month calendars. And this system is most popular in this cultural group in the English speaking world. It's basically the best way to put it and how I'm understanding it, even anthropologically, with how we're dealing with this culturally, anthropologically right now, sociologically, it's what I'm seeing. And how I've been learning it, it's just been flooding in. I've been needing to know this stuff. And so I want to share. And so one, uh, another way to measure the sky is with the sun in accordance to the constellations and a bit differently with the sidereal astrology. So there's some really passionate people about this. People are really, really passionate. This is one of those points where people get triggered, I want to say. And be like, no, this one's the best. This one's the most accurate. And that can be true for them and their reality. And I'm very happy for them. And may they continue with their study. But I'm here for those people who live their astrology in a way. And that's kind of more instead of sitting back and looking at it, I'm more here to kind of encourage the lived in experience. And both kind of can merge together a bit more. And of course, I'd encourage you to look up your chart and your sidereal chart as well to compare the two. So you can have, you can merge the two, your tropical and your sidereal charts. You can see where there's some overlap and where there may be a little bit of a gray zone of behavior and where you would weigh or lean. But we'll get into that. There's also a Vedic astrology, which is an Eastern, more Eastern world method and has deeper roots to overall wellness medicine and is a great system to study and compare with for so many things and would recommend you also go into the Veda, Vedas and the Vedic astrology and Ayurveda and all of it. Like it's a whole thing. And I've just barely like touched, dipped my toes in it with some friends and family members who are passionate about this stuff, giving me some insights. Really cool. I've had readings done in this style as well. And like I said, they all kind of try and tell you the same information about yourself. Most of it is ends up looking the same anyways, so that's good. But the math, <laughs> the math and the charting on these things is slightly different. So, which is good to know. There isn't a set upon foundational, in my opinion, astrological measurement that has been like, there isn't like a standard in my opinion, from my experience, there hasn't been a standard <laughs> where you would know exactly where those planets are supposed to be and charted. Even watching and feeling the astrology myself, watching the transits when they hit the timing of things, I often feel things hitting a little bit sooner than it's happening with the tropical astrology timing. So I know that there is some truth to that through my experience, but I haven't, I haven't found, like I said, that solid baseline for myself in this. So go ahead and take that as you must. We will continue with that again, that information that we are, I'm not giving you like, <laughs> I wish I could be giving you the pure, the purest information I can, but I'm going to attempt to still with what I can tell you about astrology. So the apps that I would recommend you get are the Chani app and the Time Passages app. I pay for both of those apps. And of course, apps, it's not really a huge expense. Any app's not really a big deal, but the Chani app will give me notifications about transits, which is when the planets are electromagnetically like squaring up with each other and causing changes in the app, in our solar system. And then Time Passages helps you look at your own chart keep other people's charts, the current chart and what we're in. And I've really been enjoying using it. It's really, it works really well. It gives me multiple ways to look at things. It works out. So for beginners, I would recommend that those two apps to help you out. What we will review in this class are the elements, 
astrology has elements and it's based off of elements. There's the modes, the modalities, the houses, the signs, natal charts, and we're going to go into matchmaking a little bit as well. So here we go. So here is your first visual that I'm not expecting you to fully understand or grasp right now. So just take a deep breath, especially newbies and just relax. <sighs> No big deal. You don't need to know this yet. This is a piece of artwork somebody made to try and make this visually appealing and give you some insights. This isn't a chart that you need to learn how to read. So just, it's all good. You can see that there is four colors going on here. Earth, air, fire, water is on here. They have color coded the 12 zodiac signs for their element and also on here in the inner circle, you can see cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Those are the modes. We're going to talk about those. And then, of course, you can see there's the 12 signs around the exterior there and they're different colors. So these are where we're going to start first. All this information I'm about to give you the rundown on. So the zodiac signs and elements. So there's 12 zodiac signs. You don't need to know them all yet. There's symbols and so on. We're going to get into that, but they are split up into the four elements. I know some of you are like, oh, what about the fifth element? Fifth elements just in your heart. We're going to just work with these four for now. So the earth element and the signs that are earth signs, they in general as people and these times of year as well tend to be themed towards more earthly means. So we have detail-oriented behavior, down-to-earth behavior, cultivated, you know, these people are cultivated and cultivating. This is grounded people and time. We're being grounded. You're, you're not making extreme moves, moving slow and calculated and practical. This is a practical energy. So just for you earth sign heavy people out there, and you don't need to know your charts yet. You may just remember this later when you check, we're going to get into that. So the three earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, according to the system. So again, they're grounded, they're practical, they're detail oriented, they're down to earth, they're cultivated, also stubborn, and they are the most immovable people out of everybody, pretty much. They're the most difficult to convince, I would say. They do not suffer fools. And yeah, they won't care not to move as fast as you want to move. They just will go at their own pace. And you'll notice if you're friends with one and earth heavy people, for you'll notice how they actually do cultivate so much more through the pace that they take in life, in my opinion. So let's move over to the next element, water. So there's three signs in water, obviously 12 divided by four is three. So every element has three signs. The water signs are Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. They are an imaginative personality in time of year, an empathic personality in time of year, emotional, nurturing, intuitive. Intuitive. <laughs> They're also extremely psychic to the point where they probably won't seek help from a psychic other than maybe to convince themselves that they already know what they know as a potential. <laughs> but you will find that water signs will move most of the time without the need for validation, I would say, from other people. They just, in, they have good instincts like the fish just to keep going with the good currents basically of the energy. So again, but they're also seen as the most emotional, which is great for people who are, I don't know, it's great for all of us to have our emotional side aware of and where it's coming from and how to work with it. So if you're even if you're having hard emotions, you drink water and you put good intention into it and you rehydrate yourself and it will help. So speaking of rehydrate yourself, we have air and fire next. So let's do, let's just keep going around clockwise here with air is next. So we have three signs in air, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. 
The air signs are known to be witty, which is to be funny or quick on their feet with their quick with their words. Social in general, can't social butterflies basically always talking, always checking in, always having people and conversations going and buzzing usually. They're spacey or they're airheads or they're difficult to keep their attention basically because they're off thinking about stuff and they are very intellectual people. They, they do think a lot. So it's hard sometimes to keep them focused on plowing the fields. They might get lost in thought and make a mistake or something like that. So they're not the most reliable workers. I would say air signs are meant to be the nomads. They're meant to kind of float around. They give amazing insights and support with intellectual issues and intellectualizing their emotions even, but for feeling them slowing down, cultivating or getting into their emotions and feeling and actually sitting through and crying something out, air signs struggle with this slowing down enough to do so. So that's one part with the air signs and those times of year, which we're about to go into Libra season. So we're about to go into this witty, social, spacey, lovey-dovey, you know, they're good listeners though. Thankfully, air signs are good listeners, but you're going to be talking a lot, listening a lot, socializing a lot this after the 23rd. It's air season. We're currently in earth season. So that's why we're in school right now. And we're studying and we're focused. We're cultivating right now. Last sign is the fire signs. So this is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. They are brave. They're leaders. They're artistic. They're confident, passionate, independent. They don't know where the volume is on their voice sometimes. They will be loud speakers. They will be okay. They will actually feel comfortable being the center of attention a lot of the time. And they'll feel comfortable speaking loudly and gesturing and being more, I would say, more of themselves and more outward projecting the fire signs. And they go well with air signs because air creates more fire. So it's a lot of fire signs have air signs kind of like boosting them up and continuing to speak with them basically and communicate with them and keep, keep the fire going basically that leads all of us as much as, you know, how much fire do you have in your chart? These are questions we're going to be asking now you should be asking. So yes, you're like, okay, there's all these elements now in everybody's natal chart, you have a mix of all of these signs. The planets are in all these different signs when you're born, all these different elements. But if you add them up, you will see that you're heavy, heaviest in one over the other. And you will probably realize, oh, I have dominantly these personality traits for this element. That's kind of the logic there. That's why we began with elements, I like to do a lot of my card readings and Tarot Tuesdays and stuff with elements. So you should know yours and know how many, know them in both styles if you want, in your sidereal and in your tropical if you want, and compare the two. But again, not mandatory. That's just extra bonus points. All right. Now, here we go. I'm just going to reference back. So here, those were the colors. We went through the elements first on here. So we went through the colors. You can see now all 12 of them around the ring here. They are equally distributed. The elements are equally distributed and mixed up amongst each other. So inner circle now, you can see that in the inner pie of this, there is three sections that also encompass certain signs. If I can show you right over here, this section. So the cardinal section has four you know, fixed section has four and mutable has four, all different elements. So this is not an elemental category. <laughs> so next category of, of astrology that you should know about these signs are their modes or the modalities. So we have cardinal, fixed, and mutable signs. So these signs will also have specific personality traits and you can kind of expect, these are good to know in the workforce in a way too, when your employee or your coworker, what is their mode? Because you will know how they're going to cooperate or deal with needing to get work done, basically. That's usually a concern when you're at work. So 
good to know these things about your uh, your staff and your family, even cooperative groups. And you just need to know the month they're born, and you can, or the month and day they're born, and you can figure out what mode they are. So you have cardinal signs, which is Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn signs. Four different times of year, of course. We're about to go into cardinal season with Libra as well. So cardinal air season is coming up on the 23rd, which is the season I was born in. Initiating dynamic, action-oriented, tackles obstacles directly head on, good at crisis management, but has difficulty difficulty with follow-through. The irony of me not being able to finish that sentence is a perfect example because I'm a Libra here and that is true. Difficulty with follow-through is often what I would say fuels me to keep going though. And I'm always trying to do that follow through no matter how long it takes. I do. (laughs) And the Aries as well, you do just kind of keep going and with that intention in mind and we tackle it head on and it's like the tip of the spear sort of energy. So if you have an Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn in your life, they're likely super competitive alpha type people who have their stuff together and they probably rarely ask you for help. And they're maybe even being judgmental because of the performance levels of other people. Cardinal signs. I'm just, I'm a live, I live as I live it. And I'm not saying I'm judgmental. I am, but (laughs) I had to learn that about myself. It's, it's like you naturally do these things and you don't realize you're doing them. But when you study what other people's signs are and how they act, it actually gives you a perspective. Oh, I'm actually pushing this um, personality trait a little too hard. Why don't I try this? So let's try fixed signs next. So the fixed signs, as you can maybe assume, the fixed signs, can you imagine these people are easy to motivate or get to do what you want them to do? No, not really. So we've got Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius in this group a proud group. <laughs> they're proud in a way where it's like God, you're, they're already God's gift to the world. So they don't really need to be doing anything for you. <laughs> so that's kind of the energy for those guys. <laughs> and I love that. Cause again, I'm Aquarius moon. So there's my fixed moon. So I'm exposing myself as an example to give humanity to this, this method here. So we've got stubborn organizing attached Tackles problems slowly, often getting stuck in them. Mm -hmm. Slow to initiate, but good at follow through. Getting stuff done and holding the fort. So Mm -hmm. Cardinal, not so great at follow through, which is weird because Capricorn and Libra and Cancer and Aries, Cancer, I feel like are. So that's maybe that's an arguable point, but fixed signs, they're said to follow through, (laughs) which is hilarious, but they're going to get, they're going to follow through on what they want to do and if they think that what you're telling them to do is worth it for them then they'll do it for sure but otherwise they've got other things to do in my opinion they do tackle things slowly and they can get stuck in their problems because they uh, get into kind of a paralysis or a fixed state let's go into the mutable signs so we've got gemini virgo sagittarius and pisces mutable. So these people are, I would say, not as much in your face or on stage waving and flailing around, maybe Sagittarius, but they're more so getting what they want (laughs) through the people that they know and getting away with it, I guess is the best way to put it. I know that's kind of savage, but it's true. And everybody has their skills, social dynamics are very important. That's why we're doing this class. So we have adaptable, versatile, changeable, communicative, easily distracted, tackles a problem by going around the problem by negotiation or by avoiding the issue. So mutable signs, they will avoid an issue altogether. They won't be following through anytime soon. They may just get distracted and just not do it. So I would say maybe the mutable signs are the least reliable group in your workforce to get deliver to deliver product without 
you know, you notice, you noticing them that they've like, it looks like a part of their soul has been like lost because you've pushed them so hard to provide you with something for them on a, on a deadline. Cause it just, it just kills them. Like they don't do well with that. So you want people to get things done. Maybe get your fixed signs and your cardinal signs on the same page and they can kind of push each other through it. And then you have like a couple of mutable signs there to keep, to keep the, the fizz going, to keep the bubbles going, to keep the communication, keep everybody like in moments of crisis, like a little bit adaptable <laughs> and, but don't expect them to actually lit, like have any sort of internal desire to like lift something and like do something <laughs> you're going to have to tell them and then they're not going to want to do it. <laughs> So I have, I joke, but it's like, I made jokes about everybody here because I love people, but I also have my own needs and to get my needs filled, fulfilled through cooperation with other people has been a variety pack, which many of you experience in your life. It's really just a mixed bag, but with astrology, it's not that difficult to fathom. And it, it, it helps me already realize, okay, I should have expected that that uh, reaction instead of somebody being like, yeah, let's do it right now. Instead of being like, oh yeah, yeah. And then walking away. It's like, <laughs> hmm, there's a variety here or like, oh yes, but we have to do this and this and this first. So there's a few different personalities of response to when you're handing over a task. So here is a different I want to say visual here to kind of just give you another review about the, the signs and their elements as well as their modes. And so here's a nice little, what even, what is this? A bar graph or not a bar graph? Like it's some sort of chart. I'm like losing the words, but it's by mind journal. And so just another visual here, top row, fire row, but it's beautiful because every mode has one of every element in it. So that's why we had to cover both. So it's kind of like a mixed experience. So we're going to go over more now the symbols that you can see here. So we're going to start with top left is Aries, which is a cardinal fire sign. So very intense energy. These guys, tip of the spear, they initiate the whole zodiac wheel. They're the initiation through it. They are that spark and they will be like that their whole lives. And then we move over to the right to Leo, which is a fire fixed sign. So they sustain action. They are people who have a brand and they're going to go with it and they're going to make it work and they're going to make it pay and they're going to make it famous. And that's that fixed <laughs> getting stuff done energy fixed fire so confident and persistent is leo energy which is also like our sun which is what it represents we've got the sagittarius energy for mutable fire which is about investigating action so they're a little bit more standoffish in a way too is the sagittarius until you ask them to say something, of course, but <laughs> they are investigating the world more. Sagittarians travel a lot. They're more in a seeking out stimuli kind of mode, I would say. So we got Cardinal Earth now is the Capricorn, which is initiating stability or responsibility. <laughs> so again, they're initiating their Cardinal they're leading, but they're also leading with the most responsibility. This Capricorn is Saturn. So daddy Saturn is a real thing. Everybody it's Kronos. There's a responsibility and a structure there to make sure that we don't unravel in time basically. So we've got Capricorns are very aware of that. Taurus sustain stability. So they're the most reliable workhorse that will sustain their output pretty much Every day, they will give you what they give you, but they'll give it to you with a consistency, I would say. And that's that fixed energy. And then Earth 
mutable is Virgo. So they investigate the stability. So Virgos are known to kind of be nitpicky and kind of, again, they are more absorbing and observing the mutable side and seeing what, what, what they like and don't like, but they will tell you a lot. They will tell their personal close loved ones, their opinions <laughs> about what their investigations have come up with. Um, we've got the air cardinal Libra, which is initiating communication. So Libras are really good at reaching out and being there and being the first one to say something. The first one is stand up and raise their hand and say something when the room is quiet. <laughs> Someone's want, they want you to say something. A Libra will raise their hand and they'll participate. That's often a thing. Aquarius is the fixed air. So again, fixed beings, they're on their own thing. They're sustaining communication they're communicating with whoever and whatever they want. It's not specific. <laughs> and they probably won't tell you everything about it either. And then the Geminis are investigating communication. Again, they're more about listening and, and creeping and watching you. Sometimes they will share, but more so they like to observe and then ask all these questions. <laughs> they have so many questions. <laughs> Okay, we have water cardinal, which is cancer, initiates emotional processes. So the can can cancers are really good at, I would say, having that emotional regulation strictness on themselves. So they know they need to do emotional maintenance on themselves. And so they initiate that for themselves, which is the cardinal energy initiating it. Scorpio, fixed energy, they will sustain an emotional intensity. So these people will likely not seek out help to process their emotions. They're creating a fortress of memory of all of their emotional experiences and using that as their strength. <laughs> and then we have Pisces, which investigates emotions. They tend to want to talk about feelings and see how everyone else is feeling. So mutables, a little bit more, I would say social group, they're more receptive than the fixed people are all on their own thing. They're their own mission. Good luck swaying them, but definitely enjoy them, what they're producing. If you enjoy what they're making, then you will be a good friend to them. And then the Cardinals are people who just can't help but keep launching new ideas and experimenting with new things. So someone messaged me and was like, these aren't the right dates and for these signs. And they were, I think they were talking about sidereal dates, which are slightly different. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do this sidereal and you want to look into that because you're something in your consciousness is dinging you like, oh, this is important to me. I must consider sidereal astrology. Then please do. I am here to tell you that that is a part of it. But if you want to keep up with the mainstream and this is what's in the newspapers and the magazines and the English speaking world that they're handing out to everybody who, you know, depending on brain cell level, like I'm going from, I'm trying to capture the, from the lowest functioning intelligence to the highest functioning intelligence in this basics class, <laughs> the best I can. So Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces is the order of the Zodiac on the wheel. Whoop. Whoop, which is here and here. So we'll get into that for a second. So I just want you to check what day were you born? If you don't know your sign, your, that would be your sun sign. The day that you're born is the sign of the sun for you. And based on the day you're born, you're one of these 12 signs. Now, again, a little bit of insert of information. There are some modalities that have inserted a 13th sign. I do not go with this one because the 12 is equally divvied up. It's perfectly, you know, the year is divvied up into 12 sections very well. And with this 13th sign, it was kind of shoved in between, I think it was Scorpio and Sagittarius. And it was for a short amount of time. It didn't really match. So in my opinion, that's another, that maybe would be astrology class three, where we would look into the theory of this and you can make up your own decision because I try not to judge, but out of my own 
study so far doesn't go mm -hmm. for me, but go ahead and look that up if that interests you. But of course, I think the 13th thing out of 12 things can get into a really deep esoteric place. So I just want to warn you on that. And here we go. We're going to continue. So please pick your sign, figure out what your sign is based off of this chart. If you can read it, I'm going to read it out loud really quickly. Aries is from March 20th to April 20th. And that's technically the new Zodiac year is March 20th, Aries season. Which you can see here, it's a fire sign cardinal ruled by Mars. It's ruled by the ram, the animal, the ram. They're very passionate and they're very ambitious people. Taurus, April 20th to May 20th. They're the earth sign, a fixed sign ruled by the planet Venus. Their animal is the bull or their symbol is the bull. They are common loyal people. Gemini is May 20th to June 20th. It is an air sign, mutable sign. It's ruled by Mercury. It's not the only sign ruled by Mercury. And Taurus isn't the only sign ruled by Venus. So some of these are, some of the planets get multiple signs because of the way that they show up in the sky on both sides of the season. Just a heads up on that. But let's, I'm not trying to confuse you. Gemini, air sign, ruled by Mercury. The twins is the sign for Gemini or the arms of the lungs. Sometimes there's body parts for every astrology symbol. Also, they are the communicative and youthful sign. Very true. Cancer's next June 20th to July 22nd. It's a water sign, cardinal sign ruled by the moon symbol is the crab. They are cozy and caring people. Leo is July 23rd to August 22nd group fire sign, fixed sign, sun, they are ruled by the sun. So the Leos are ruled by the sun. That's why they just get there. They're just the leaders. Basically they are real. They have the lion as their symbol. They're confident and creative. The Virgos are from August 22nd to September 22nd. It's the season we're in now earth sign, mutable sign. Mercury is ruled rules Virgo as well. So Virgos and Gemini's you're ruled by Mercury. Your symbol is the virgin or a virginous woman in a way. Resourceful, helpful is some qualities of a Virgo. Very true. Libra, September 23rd to October 22nd, the season we're going into. Air sign, cardinal sign, ruled by Venus, just like Taurus is. They, the symbol is the scales, so like balancing scales. They are charming and diplomatic people. Scorpio is from October 23rd to November 22nd. They are water signs, fixed signs. They are ruled by Mars and Pluto. So Scorp Scorpio has an interesting mix of energy there. They are Their symbol is the scorpion. They are magnetic and complex people. Sagittariuses are from November 23rd to December 22nd. They're fire signs, mutable signs, ruled by Jupiter, the largest planet also the luckiest planet. Sen their symbol is the centaur. They are intelligent and adventurous people. Capricorns are December 22nd to January 19th. They're earth signs, cardinal signs. They are ruled by Saturn, which I mentioned earlier. Their symbol is the sea goat, sea goat which is a goat with an actual fish's tail or mermaid tail. They are reliable and intentional people. Aquariuses are January 20th to February 18th, air sign, fixed sign, ruled by Uranus. They are the water bearer, unique and independent. And it's also the great age that we are currently in, apparently, is we're going into the age of Aquarius, our whole solar system. Then we have Pisces as the last sign of the 12th, from February 19th to March 19th. They are water sign, mutable sign. They're ruled by Neptune. Their symbol is the two fish. And they are imaginative and emotional people. So here are the 12 signs. Now from Aries to Pisces, Aries is considered, Aries and Aries people are considered basically the new, the newest, the earliest group of people of the year. So they are the freshest spring chickens. They're the babies of the group. Then as you go through the Zodiac from 
into Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. We're going, let's go all the way to Libra. So basically the maturity level of people in these signs and groups are very much similar to their age in the Zodiac. So again, Aries are tend to be naive and the young people, but that's why they're passionate and they're ambitious because they don't have all this stuff telling them they can't do what they want to do. They just haven't had the life experience in a way or the soul experience in a way. They weren't designed for that. And they're ready to go, you know, surprise us all with their determination to do stuff that some of us have given up on. So that's great. But Taurus then goes a little bit older, a little more mature, Gemini, a little more mature, Cancer, a little more mature, Leo, a little more mature, Virgo, a little more mature, Libra's right in the middle. So they're kind of like the 40 year old, 50 year old person that's just reliable and hanging out. And they're balancing the center of the zodiac, balancing both sides, the youngins and the older more mature souls in a way too. So it gets more mature with Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Pisces being like where you would be at your most mature soul state, which is why they're so imaginative and emotional actually, because emotions are really so much more about energy and energy is what we're all supposed to learn how to manipulate and understand to be able to create and that's, I think, what our purpose is and what we're doing in this hologram together. But how you were born and when you were born shows you how you will tackle this task of doing that, what kind of style you're going to approach life. So let's continue. So now we have to look at the wheel. So instead of this beautiful, really easy to read, we're now going to spin it all the way around a chart. So again, you kind of have to start tilting your head. Unfortunately, when you're reading charts, I'd love to see other astrologers and just see them reading charts and how often they turn their head <laughs> with the way that they've made these circular. It's kind of funny, unless you're just constantly moving the paper in front of you, like a, you've printed it off. It is a little bit annoying sometimes, in my opinion, to see it in a wheel shape, but it is the way it is done. This is the way that the astrological chart will look and in the end of it, it will look like this and like this. So this is the final form right here. So we're almost there. So here we go. I just want you to look at the numbers here. You can see the number one or the golden star there on the left Whoop. here by ego or the first house or the first zodiac sign, which is Aries. So these are the houses you can see here in the internal area. So the houses go counterclockwise on the inner circle of these charts. That always gets me because I love clockwise stuff, but we have to go counterclockwise around these particular wheels. Just a note. So obviously this is actually accurate. Most of them online will have the first house in the same spot. So once you kind of memorize where house number one is, you'll be able to look at these charts and go to the first house and kind of start there. So where your eyes should go is to the first house and then start sweeping it down counterclockwise along the houses and you will see more information as you go. So the first house. So we're just going to look on the outer wheel here just as a reminder. First house, Aries, also is about your ego. Again, a newborn baby, they don't care about anyone else in the room. They're just demanding for what they need. That's kind of like the most basic way to explain the first house, the ego, the raw ego, Aries energy. Then we got second, which is Taurus. They're very material. They are about material things. Second house. So that's about your things. Third house is about expression. Third house is Gemini. So again, super talkative, expressive. Fourth house is about your home. That's Cancer. Again, cancers are crabs. They have their home on their back, their shells, just kind of like turtles, similar kind of thing, like a hermit crab, you know, that's cancer. That's their home. Then we've got sexy stuff, it says, in the fifth house, which is funny, which is Leo. So Leos think they're the sexiest out of the whole zodiac. And with their hair, you'll know a Leo because of their hair. I'll 
tell you that right off the bat because they always have the biggest, most wonderful, luscious looking hair, which pretty much culturally is often like connected to, I want to say virility and, you know, your good genetics. So I would say good on you, Leos, and you just, however many, (laughs) how your chart looks and how much you have in the fifth house, that's your sexiness level. And uh, you just got to be aware of that. You got to be responsible for that because that's not everybody's got it like you. So you just got to know what you got and work with it, you know, with all these houses, all these houses matter. So we're going from fifth to sixth, which is your routine, which is Virgo, super routine, the virgin, and very much to code, to code a good, well-behaved being, your routine, the things you do and you're well-behaved. Then we got situationships with this, which is the seventh house, which is Libra. So basically this is how <clears throat> your social, <clears throat> excuse me, your social self will be interacting. <clears throat> We've got eighth house, which is, it says intense shit, which is hilarious. I didn't even read this <laughs> all the way. That's funny. Excuse my language, but intense intensity matters. Intensity matters. And we're not trying to make jokes about intensity because you need to know how much intensity you got going on in your chart. That's, that is Scorpio. They're known to be intense. Then we've got ninth house, which is the big thinking house. Again, Sagittarius, they're the travelers, the explorers. Purpose is 10th house. That is your Capricorn, your purpose. So again, what are you doing with all of your time? What are you spending all of your time, your Kronos doing? Evolution is 11th house. So that is your Aquarius. So these are the rebels of the Zodiac. They are the most creative kind of independent thinkers, the aliens. Okay. So how much alien evolution you got going on 11th house and then 12th house is your mental health, or I want to say your mystical self. So if your mental health isn't good, sometimes it gets a little too mystical. So we got to keep an eye on that. So how much 12th house you got going on may also relate to how your mental health is regularly. If you got a lot in there, you might struggle with emotions and your mental health and that's okay. It's just good to know. Even people who struggle with addiction, like this is good to know about yourself because then you aren't punishing yourself. You just know thyself more and you can make fun. You can joke around like, oh, of course I want to do this because I'm a heavy in the first house and things like that. These are the things you'll start saying out loud. So here again is another depiction of what your astrology chart will look like. Again, there it is on the left is house number one. You can see then there the planets are on here. The signs are on here. There is some labeling here. So we've got our zodiac symbol, sign archetype, house ruler, house. This is just another visual, a little more fancy. If you want to see the fancier versions of the symbols or the archetypes, sign archetypes, you can see them around here. On the outside, so there's Libra, like usually a naked man holding up a, a, some scales. <laughs> That's my sign, you know, we love that. It's next to Virgo, which is the lady. <laughs> but yeah, we've got, and there's Aquarius, another naked man holding up some water. So we have either holding up water or you're holding up some scales. Sometimes the symbols are not animals, but they are inanimate objects being supported by humans just the way it is the way it is okay so when you run your chart you can see here on the top left here whoop excuse me top left is the time or is the name no it's not is the date they were born the place they were born and the time they were born very important to get the most accurate reading about your astrology if you do not know the time If you know if it was before noon or afternoon, that'll help put in a time that you think is close and it may give you some insights, but it won't be fully accurate all the way. But the inner planets may be more accurate for you. 
if you don't have your birth time still. So we can get some of your information. We for sure can get your your sun sign. <laughs> and then depending on the time of day, we don't know where the moon is sometimes because it changes signs regularly. So that's when it starts getting a little trickier after that point. But we know where the sun was. So for some people, that's enough. And that's fine. That's good. Go with that. If you don't know your birth time, meant to be. You're free of all this extra complication. Otherwise, you have to know. <laughs> have to know yourself. I'm joking, but this is what it's going to look like. So when you run your chart, so I just want you to look at it for a second and not get overwhelmed. I just want you to look at it. Take a deep breath. <sighs> All right. This is somebody's chart. Some random ass person we don't know. Welcome to the class. So I just took this picture off of Google really quickly. Again, the houses are labeled on this one, so that helps a lot. So I just want you to go, but ironically, no, it's not. The houses aren't labeled. What is going on here? Why does this look wrong? Maybe I am looking at the wrong thing. It looks like it's screwed up to me. Let me just check one second. Like, this might not be a good picture for us after all. Well, uh, check in. Darn it, you know? I think that is confusing, because that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> well, somebody is going to screw up people on the internet. Like, I even fell for it. Okay, so ignore... <laughs> un shoot! Okay. Ignore the outside symbols. Ironically, I ignore all of these labels on the outside. I want you to mostly focus because on the inside, you see those little numbers on the inside. Oops. Those little numbers on the inside. Those are right. That's house number one. It's in the right spot, but it's not supposed to be Leo. So I don't know why that's sitting there. Very confusing. <laughs> so ignore those symbols. This is, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to keep going with this this way for this class but we will fix this with classes in the future so you see the little one there that is house number one that's aries that's what we should be looking for every time number one now i want you to look at the lines that are on this inner circle the blue and the red lines you can see are being traced around over here just look at them to see where they are in the whole circle here. They're in the bottom right corner. And now we can look at the numbers. They're this, all of these lines are hanging out in what houses? They're hanging out in eighth through the fourth house. Eight, seven, six, five, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see all of these lines are in these houses. So this person's chart is heavily their personality basically is heavy in those four houses and what they represent, right? So let's go back to a really easy chart. Let's look again at fourth through eighth house and what they stand for. So fourth is home, fifth is sexy stuff, sixth is routine, seven is situationships or relationships eighth is intensity and intense stuff okay let's go look at it again so with those things in mind now let's look at what house has the most weight in it has the most activity so you can see on the next circle down this lighter blue circle is actually symbols of planets which i did not put in this presentation but the planetary symbols are also a part of this and they are as such <laughs> there is a legend of these online everywhere you go but i will give you the short of it this is the sun Whoop. we've got the sun over here but let's go to this house the one that has the most stuff in it so we've got pluto saturn mars and the moon in the fourth house 
Pluto, Saturn, Mars, and the moon in the fourth house. That's important for this person. That's how you would say that. And then we've got the next house over, fifth house. You can see Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter are over here. So they've got three signs in their fifth house. One, they've got Venus in their sixth house, Mercury in their seventh, and the sun in their eighth. And they've got a few more signs over here, but for the most part, that's how we would read that. Now, again, so for the basics, if you're looking at this, there's often a write-up underneath that clearly states the exact degrees that every planet in your chart is in. So you know what house they're in, you know what degree they're supposed to be in and around the circle, and in what house, what house, what mode, sorry, what temperament in a way that you're going to have heavy in. So that is a beginning into that. Here are the apps again, Time Passages and Chani. So Time Passages will give you a similar looking chart, but with accurate planets around the outside of it. And just look at your own chart and see where all of those little lines are more heavy, what houses they're more heavy in, and what houses that you have no activity in. That's another thing to note. If you this person, for example, they don't have activity in house three through nine, basically. So they're missing a lot of these things in their life. They're missing, like, they don't have as much expression or material things or ego, or they don't have mental health or you know, existential experiences, evolution, purpose, big thinking. So they're kind of not as strong in those categories, this particular individual. Is that a bad thing? No, it's just what they are. And they, you will see that that's probably very accurate for whatever person you're reading about, especially if you know them. It's very validating. <laughs> it's hard to describe a person and then you read their chart to them and you say all these things out loud and you're like, wow, that actually describes you very well. And that's what you find with astrology all, all the time. Another step with astrology, after you have, I want to say not mastered the charts, but sort of given yourself the space to, I want to say just watch the weight of someone's chart or your own chart and where they weigh more heavily, what houses they weigh more heavily in. That will give you, I would say, the roughest but a really good idea about how to handle this person, what sort of things that they are more interested in, because that's where all those houses will be lit up and they'll be good at those things for the most part. So another way, again, that people use astrology is to compare their compatibility with other people. This is no stranger to most of us females, you know, out there, <laughs> Uh, even in my high school, there was a matchmaker program thing that you like filled out your birthday and your, your astrology basically, and some questions. And then with that information and all the other students, they would spit out reports about people who were most compatible with you based off your astrology and off the way you answered questions and stuff. So these things are happening. It's, it's, been a long, long time matchmaking and astrology kind of go together. And some people exclusively do readings where they compare the charts of both of the people in the relationship and see where they overlap and see again where those holes are in the houses and where there is a lot of busy, busy activity in the houses. So you know how those two people are going to relate. Another really, I would say a a viral way okay sorry i'm just reading comments for a second they're talking about getting your birth certificate time it is tricky but try and get your birth certificate time um they have this new viral trend basically is to find the phase the moon was in when you were born again not when you get your natal charts done on these charts, it's not going to tell you that for the most part, some apps might, but mine doesn't. 
uh, tell us that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't believe it did. I don't believe mine did. No, it didn't. So there is a tool on yourmoonphase.com that is a calculator. There's many astro astrology calculators online that are free to get your natal chart, N-A-T-A-L, natal, which you'll need your birth time for. But some charts online will help you kind of figure out if you don't have that time, they, there's some options for that. But taking the next step is to find your moon phase when you were born. What, what phase was the moon in when you were born? And then your companion, either maybe your best friend, your mom, your sibling, your husband, your wife, your, you know, your greatest enemy. I don't know, but if you can get their time, their birth, their birth information, you can individually look up what your moon phases are. And if the moon phase is very similar, then it's said that you are likely to get along very well. Basically it, it, it seems to be another one of those things that matchmakers are finding was very effective to see who is a very compatible match. And this is a little bit more broad because you can use it with more than just a lover basically you can use it with family members and so on it's it's not as specific to love um but it also will potentially show you who you aren't compatible with and that's also been a fun part of the trend is people who are in relationships but not committed like married or anything like that they're comparing theirs and their their significant other's moon phase and then seeing oh they are not the same <laughs> and there is a reason why they are battling all the time for example so i would encourage you to jump on to the fun figure out your moon phase if it's something you haven't tried yet i'm glad that i could give you something new to try in this class i also mentioned here that knowing your moon phase is excellent also knowing your natal moon sign, which will show up on your chart when you run it. Also your inner planets. So the planets between the sun and the asteroid belt. So before the gas giants of Jupiter, Saturn, and there is more personality is our inner planets. So to know the placements of your inner planets, at least, which is Mercury, Venus, <clears throat> excuse me, Mercury, Venus, uh, your earth, which is your mid heaven and your Mars sign are really good indicators of how you're going to act on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a big, a start on that. This is what the moon phase calculator looks like when you go search it up. It's very basic. You don't even need the time. So go ahead and figure out your moon phase. So the bonus points for this class, and I would say for astrology as you move forward, is learning your outer planets, which is the placements of your Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and your Pluto natal chart placements, which again will be on your chart when you get these apps or you run your chart online. It'll show you a list from the sun down to Pluto, what sign that planet or you know, the sun is in and the degrees it's in specifically, which is also important, but we didn't get into degrees today. So that's bonus points as well, is learning your degrees and learning what each degree means for each placement as well, because every sign goes from zero to 29 or 30 degrees basically, and then it switches to the next one. That's how the Zodiac is broken down into 12 is it's just a whole bunch of 30 degree pieces. <laughs> and um, the next thing that you may want to find out. Second. The next thing you may want to find out are the asteroids that are in your natal chart as well. So there are smaller bodies not planets <clears throat> or moons, but they're asteroids like Chiron is the most famous one. And 
Chiron asteroid is your, the Chiron is the wounded healer in the mythology. So this is sort of something that you will endure in your lifetime and then help others with based off of how you learn to deal with this situation. Basically, it's kind of like your test in life and it'll wound you, but you will heal your wound and then you will be able to help others who are going through the same wound, for example. So learning your asteroids, there's a bunch of other aspects of your personality and of your life path that have to do with these asteroids and what they're doing out there too. The next thing that you can get into is your human design. So this is again, taking your astrological, like your birth time and your, your birth date information, and it puts it into a picture basically of the human body and all of the chakras and the major chi organs basically, or major chakras of the body. And this system will help you understand how your astrology affects your organs and which organs in your body are able to, I would say, act and make action happen for you and which organs in your body are more receptive to what other people are doing and kind of more of a social response. So that's a wonderful tool to know about people as well. So if you're trying to get to know yourself and others and you have your birth time and your birth information, do your human design chart and start there too. Another advanced thing you can do is a progressed chart, which is not your natal chart, but it is for today. What your what have all those planets and the sun and everything, how have they moved? since the day you are born basically into to and how where are they now <laughs> where are they now i think somebody just sent a donation so thank you very much for donating to paypal.me slash ds beings which is short for divine sovereign beings ds beings thank you so much appreciate it <laughs> this class has been a hit. I'm glad you guys, I'm getting great feedback from it so far. I'm very grateful to be of service. And these progress charts are wonderful because you can then push it into the future. So if you want to know about where your, where everything, where your natal chart is going to be accurately, like how all your planets have moved since the day you're born and where they'll be sitting on that progressed time that you want to look into. So perhaps you want to look at where all the planets are going to be hanging out on your 60th birthday for, for fun, just to see what the vibe's going to be like that day. That's how you would work with that particular chart. Some astrologers do them for you. I'm pretty sure you can get it online again with those calculators. You just put in the date you want to progress to and you check those out if you want. I don't know if there's anything you need to look forward to, but it may just be fun to see today versus your natal chart, see where the, the changes have, have locked in, what's different. And then finally, bonus points and the bonus education of this is memes and culture. So there's been a massive movement in the comedy scene, basically, at large, I want to say now, it's really pro proliferated, the language of this. Pretty much everyone in our culture right now, in English-speaking culture, I swear, knows their sun sign. They know what day they're born. They know their zodiac sign. And now they're starting to speak more about it and use it to, I want to say, to playfully juxtapose with others and and relate to others in, in new ways, but ways that actually are logical. They do make sense and they do. It's a mutual compatible thing. You know, <laughs> put a two Libras in the same room. They're going to find each other and be like excited about it probably pretty quick, but that's a Libra thing. So Every kind of sign has one of those behaviors, you know, throw a couple Scorpios in a room and, you know, you're going to be having some very deep, you know, probably some deep conversations or some really surface level conversations because they don't feel comfortable with each other, <laughs> things like that. So anyways, memes have become a major thing because the behavior is predictable and it is extremely relatable. And if you get your comedy right, you really will capture one twelfth of the population potentially with one of your memes, which is pretty good. It's pretty good views. 
And I'm actually curious which of the 12 Zodiac signs has the least amount of online meme pages with that Zodiac written in it. It's probably Capricorn, but I, it could be maybe like Virgo or something like that. I'm curious, like which, <laughs> which of the Zodiac has the least meme pages? Cause it seems like every astrology memer makes their meme tag, their Zodiac sign, and then like some other funny thing in the title. A lot of the time they will, they will identify with one and they will make memes specifically to that Zodiac sign and then poke fun at the others basically is the game. So knowing yours, knowing your spouse's, knowing your moon sign and your spouse's moon sign and your children's sun and moon sign will help you so much because the moon is our moodiest self is how we process our emotions basically. So you want to know how all of the people in your household are processing their emotions because you're the one who's going to have to deal with their emotions and you're going to have to mutually process them. So it's great to know <laughs> who all these little people are running around, what, what planets are pulling on their emotions and how those planets typically behave. And so finding out your moon sign is essential. If you don't know anything else but your sun and your moon sign, you'll get by culturally really well. The next thing people usually look for is your rising sign or your ascendant sign, which we didn't get into this, this class, but the ascending sign is sort of the sign you're striving towards, and it is a part of the math of what was ascending on the horizon when you were born. <clears throat> and then descendant sign is what was leaving down the horizon when you were born. And that's supposed to be your past life was your descending sign or the opposite of your ascendant sign. So I'm an Aries ascendant. So I'm a, I'm a beginner, you know, but I was, um, opposite of, what am I saying? I think I'm saying that wrong, but forget about my example. But basically the ascendant sign is a good one. Then we have your Mercury sign, which is how you communicate. So you want to know that about people because they communicate to you all day long. You want to know how they're communicating, what they'll communicate like. It's a great way to know people's Mercury sign. Then there's their Venus sign. That's how much they're going to love you and how much they're going to love themselves. And so you're going to figure out how they love to be loved and how they love to love. That is that vibe. Venus is all about pleasure and love and good vibes. Then we have obviously Earth, which is your midheaven. Then we have your Mars, which is your masculine. So the Venusian energy is more feminine. And then the Mars is more masculine. And Mars is a fighter. Mars is the war energy ruled by Aries. You know, they, everybody knew Mars was the feisty one. And again, that's you. You all have a Mars placement. You got a feisty time in you as well. But how is your feistiness going to behave is based off of the sign that your Mars is in when you're born. So figure that one out and figure out that with the people you may be having some friction with or you don't want to have friction with. Figure out what their Mars sign is. Excellent. So I've recommended you get your your sun, your moon, your, your rising or your ascendant, your Mercury, your Venus, and your Mars, as well as your midheaven. So that's seven things I'm asking you to maybe find out about yourself and memorize about yourself and begin with that, with your study on their personal astrological study in your, your vibe, because it takes a while, but it's good to write notes. And then it starts to pile up. It all starts to make sense. And the memes start to really make sense. And then you're laughing amongst the Leos laughing at yourself and still being fabulous and outperforming all of us with their fabulous hair. But that's what the memes are for. And they're meant to give you that love and that respect for who you are. So here is an example of some Venn diagrams, which are kind of like memes in this way. The, the person who wrote these made them funny and relatable. So I'm going to read these to you as, again, another way to kind of show you the temperaments of these signs, which is the most important thing, in my opinion, for the basics 
So this is again, based off of the mode or the modality, which there are three, cardinal, mutable, and fixed. There's four signs in each one of them, making the 12. This is the fixed sign Venn diagram. We've got the fixed signs, Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. Now, if you were any of these signs, <laughs> please look at the wording that is in your Venn diagram circle. Does it make sense to you? Probably will. <laughs> I'm going to read the, the Venn diagram connection between Scorpio and Aquarius, because that is a lot of what I've got in my chart which is amazing because you don't need to know that is an excellent thing to put in there, in my opinion, because again, very intellectual, very secretive and mysterious, those two signs. So they will tell you lots of stuff and be very open, but they will also do that in order to know, in order to balance the things that they are politely not saying <laughs> and that you do not need to know, which I live that life as I make my personal diary an online thing. I have balanced those two worlds. Then we've got a few more mixes. So mixing between Scorpio and Leo, dramatic exits, love that. Mixing between Leo and Taurus, last minute change of plans, love that. Mixing between Aquarius and Taurus, get out of my house, love that. <laughs> These are the sort of personality things. We love that. <laughs> The also mix between Scorpio and Aquarius getting my way <laughs> is uh, that's also a mix with Taurus getting my way. Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus. Excellent. Very much true. So these are some, some edginess of the fixed signs. Again, excuse me. I don't agree. No, thanks. Getting my way. Get out of my house. Last minute change of plans. You don't need to know that dramatic exits. All those words, that word pile, fixed signs, Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio. They are going to have that kind of tude overall. Now we've got mutable signs. They're going to have a different tude. Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, Gemini. Absolutely and totally sure. Oh, I've heard of that. What's that all about? Sorry, I was daydreaming. It's my dream. Who said that? I can help already left. So a very interesting pile and personality here. A lot of <laughs> saying yes, maybe even when not meaning it, wanting to know what other people are saying, uh, wanting to know what's going on, and also not able to pay attention <laughs> to what's going on because you're busy daydreaming. Mutable signs. Then we've got the cardinal signs, Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, Libra. Again, I put this one in one of the posts, which is Cancer and Aries mixing together is saying, hey, listen up, nerds. So this is this guy's personality. Listen up, nerds. I'm going to get what I want. That doesn't look right. Private meltdowns. <laughs> no, let me do it. Inner panic. I know so. We'll start shit. So Again, feistier group, the cardinal signs. Everywhere you see Aries, just expect feistiness. So we're lumped in with the Aries guys. We're just going to be a little bit feisty. Cardinal signs, they're the feisty group. Mutable signs, they're a little more hesitant, a little more play by ear, a little more in their own little world. Then fixed signs, they're definitely in their world and they don't care to let you in it really. So they're on their own. So this particular basics class was on average a $40 donation for everyone on my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries. That's what I charge for these monthly classes on average. I give a lot of these classes away for free, and I also receive donations instead for access to this class through my PayPal account, paypal.me slash dsbeings. Now, I appreciate every single donation that I receive. Truly, they all go towards my growing budding family. I'm a young woman with a young family. We're growing, we're expanding. I'm honored to use my education to promote education. I hope that this presentation gave you some basics and helped warm you up to the themes and the 
the language, I want to say, of astrology. So you get into it. And like I said, it's it was heavier into more of the elements, the signs and their personalities, and the modes of the zodiac. And this to me is more about temperaments, which is what I'm more interested in as a human scientist, humanities. I want, I, I value understanding humans and other people as quickly as I can. So I can then be of service to them and provide for them basically. And this technique of knowing other people's astrology has been very helpful for that. It's helped me also as a comedian and somebody who loves to make people laugh as a writer. And I love to make memes and I love to write things to poke fun and also relate to the different temperaments of our planets and these different zodiac signs and the seasons and the elements and so on. So Behind me, I think you can see, or at least on the one side here, is an eight-pointed star. And I've been talking about the eight-pointed star a lot. The eight-pointed star is also visible in my actual logo, which I didn't know about until later. But there is eight points around one, two, three, four, five, eight. Yeah, eight points around my logo, which is interesting. And this eight pointed star is following me around a lot. And I realize it's the Buddhist wheel as well as eight points, but one other really major thing that I think I'm going to do in next month's guardian training class that we're doing right now, but for October is we're going to talk about this eight pointed star and the sulfagio frequencies, because I love them. And I want to then bring those into the community. If you haven't heard about them or you want to go deeper into them with me next month, that's what we're going to do in October is we're going to work on this eight-pointed star, sulfagio frequency imagery, and how to use the sulfagio frequencies and why their structure matters and why it's kind of embedded everywhere. So if you're not familiar with the sulfagio frequencies, this is kind of like a little, here you go opportunity to let you search it up before but one that's the most popular is 528 hertz which you can see here on the right hand side 528 hertz is the green ray or the heart chakra energy or the the energy that's coming out of our sun if i'm understanding that correctly it's at that frequency so as you can see there's other frequencies which means there's other suns out there operating at different parts of the sulfagio frequency potentially we're going to have a great chat about that as well, I'm also going to maybe bring in a few extra things for astrology too into that class to kind of move into that direction. So I'm excited to keep creating classes for this guardian training. I'm, I'm honored to train with the best. I'm training with people who actively know they are guardians of their, of their loved ones, of their own soul and of our shared reality. And I just wanna bring the knowledge I have in nice little packets once a month to the collective as my honor and offer to continue, continue to promote the intelligence and the community, I wanna say the conversation about astrology and whatever other things that I bring up. So it's been a true honor again to serve you in this class. I have some people here in this Zoom call that I, this is being recorded in who have been making comments in our Zoom chat throughout this video. So I'm just going to look back and see if any of them mentioned anything that they wish to concern the rest of you guys about in Ascension Diaries nation out there. So again, those of you hearing me now on the call, now is your time to type something if you have to say something about this class or if you have any questions or you know, whatever it is that to fill the gap, let's say I'm open ears. They were talking about some of the people in the chat who are here for the live class. We're talking about where to get their certificate, their birth certificate, so they could find their, their, their birth times. Obviously that's a concern about where you were born, the hospital you were born at, Obviously, your parents probably have the information. And if you don't have it, don't worry. You most likely know the day you're born. So that's good. That's a start. That's 
that's pretty much the the most important thing is your sun sign really and then the rest is just for deeper study. But again, if you don't have your time, then you've been relieved from that task, in my opinion, by the universe and congratulations. <laughs> your congratulations. Why don't you maybe work on frequency science and join us for next next month's class. And we're going to get into the sulfagio frequencies, which is another major thing that brought me into Ascension Diaries was these no this knowledge and wanting to pursue more of it seeing how it was relevant with our own planetary frequency and so on. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, we've got a Libra in the house who is here for the, the Zoom call. Very nice. We've got Capricorn in the house. <laughs> yes, you have some tuning forks for your solfagio frequencies, says one of the students here. Excellent. We're gonna. I'm going to add that into next week's class. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, yes, Professor Alexis, of course, <laughs> Chinese horoscope would be an interesting topic. Excellent. I have, uh, who doesn't love the Chinese horoscope? Like wonderful. If you don't know your Chinese horoscope, look that up too. Excellent point, Alex. Appreciate you being here again. I said the Mayan calendar as well. You can go on to, hold on, hold on. Let me grab that information for you for this recording. Doop, -a doop, -a doop, -a doop. The app is called 13 colon 20 colon sync, which is the Mayan calendar app. So you can get your Mayan calendar from your day of birth. What is your symbol? So today's symbol for us is the 18th based off of the Mayan calendar is lunar 27 solar plexus chakra, yellow resonant star guided by universal fire is what my calendar says here. So that's Excellent. That's what we're doing right now as a group. We're guided by that universal fire. I love that. Your Chinese zodiac, obviously, there is elements to that as well. And that's really good for learning your feng shui. So we could actually do that as another, maybe we could do a feng shui class, very basics again, because all I know is the basics in a lot of these modalities comfortably to teach. The rest of it, I'm still, I would say I'm an intermediate at a lot of this stuff but I'm doing basics classes as a way to like pay, pay it forward and pass it on and keep everyone on the same page as well as I, as I develop, but you get an element with your Chinese Zodiac and an animal, obviously they, I believe it's in 12 year cycles as well. And yes. So know your element and know your animal. We are in year of the rabbit right now i think the water rabbit this year so that people will have arranged their houses and their furniture and painted walls and done all of this stuff even what their furniture is made out of metal metal or wood you know there's people who are studied in the understanding of chi movement along with the chinese zodiac to try and utilize the chi of the planets and all the energies of the stars and the elements in their homes, including like what their furniture is made out of, where their mirrors are, where their stuff is and arranging it, what color it is in order to try and make the chi in your home work with your personal chi based off of your own, you know, your own Chinese zodiac, what you were born with and making your home work for you. And another excellent practice. I had a practitioner do a short session for me, gave me some insights about my new house when I moved. I wrote down some notes. I actually found that note today. So that's super interesting. That's coming up, but that's good to know. So we may have our topics for the next two months already locked in. So that's really cool. We've got sulfagio frequencies and frequency medicine potentially for October. And then we can do feng shui basics in November. So that sounds fun. Okay. Student Stacy says, thank you so much for breaking it down. It's and it seemed that for even the little people, my granddaughter at 10 started figuring out personalities according to birth signs. Epic. Oh, that's such great feedback. Thank you so much, Stacy. Yes, the kids are figuring out. It's becoming a part of the language and they are learning each other. I would have loved to be a kid where every kid knew your Zodiac, except obviously kids are kids and they're going to want to compare and compete, but that's how you'll know your cardinal signs. <laughs> 
<laughs> and your fixed signs, you'll be like, okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, but that is actually if they're smart enough, they'll be like, oh, you want to make fun of me about my Zodiac? You must be a uh, Aries. <laughs> I find that Aries struggle to accept astrology some of the most, but then they're so funny because they'll be like, oh, actually, yeah, that's true. So they're a bit wishy-washy. <laughs> Chinese breaks down into four signs, hour, day, month, and year. Awesome. So you guys know more about the Chinese Zodiac than I do, which is awesome. But with a little bit of research, I'll be able to add that in to maybe our feng shui class in November and get some of that knowledge in there. And it'll be good for me to refresh and encourage me to even learn more because obviously teaching these classes is teaching me more and more. That's it's the back and forth bonus, back and forth bonus. I don't know if every university professor feels that way about teaching, but I certainly am enjoying this back and forth exchange. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to play with you and make these classes and do this free range, wild education and expression of these topics that I love and I think are useful for my fellow guardians and healthcare practitioners out there, my fellow socialites. Thank you guys for being so sweet and being here today and for your donations again and for joining my Patreon. I am looking forward to the next couple projects. Obviously I told you next guardian training, what we're up to next two months now, which is awesome. You can keep that ahead of time so you can join Patreon. You'll be invited to those calls. It's a monthly membership. So it'll renew every month. You can keep getting invited to these calls invited to the live streams and the interviews that I do. And again, we're going to be doing in-person events soon. I want to say as soon as I'm saying soon as a way to manifest it as well and keep that energy going, the lubricant is there and it is flowing. I'm actually, like I said, I have a lot of cardinal energy. So I actually push forward and get things done and like push people <laughs> to initiate things. Then some people aren't as reactive to that or responsive to that. Like we were talking about, the fixed signs don't like to be rushed. Mutable signs don't like to be told what to do, like don't like to be distracted from their little realities at all. <laughs> and so you you uh, working with a crew of people to get an event done, you got to deal with all the different personalities and how they're going to process, you know, these initiations and this push and this drive that I have but they appreciate it at the same time. And I'm valued for that amongst my friends and for creating these events and doing Ascension Diaries and being on social media and educating about space weather and astrology and all the spiritual, I would say, auxiliary information that kind of helps mesh in and make sense of this world we're in other than what we've learned at school, which was just a bunch of hearsay, basically. <laughs> stuff we didn't see, stories we didn't tell. So we're here in the active present. I've got another comment from student here. Okay, maybe I missed this part. I'm having a hard time figuring out how being born on a specific time imbues you with these characteristics. Like how does that work? The way I've thought about it is when a planet is in front of a constellation, it sort of acts as a magnifying glass for the light energy emitted from the constellation exactly those two and that is true that's electromagnetically that's exactly what's going on is that the planet and the constellation are lining up creating that magnification and that electromagnetic code i would say or personality or vibe <laughs> and we feel it through our body and through all our organs and so on but the time you're born is helpful because every single you know moment of time the earth is moving all of the celestial realm is moving it's at degrees per second or whatever so it's down to the second uh pretty much we're down to the minute they have it where you're born because the slight degrees of placements of where every planet is matters to your chart those between zero and 30 degrees is important you get a 30 degree window of that beam of light from that constellation and that planet overlapping in the 30 degrees where are they at 
And that every single one of those degrees has a specific characteristic that's been broken down that small. And again, it helps with the placements, the exact placements of the planets, which constellations they were exactly in front of the most. And also all of the smaller bodies, like those asteroids I was talking about, it helps again to specify where those guys were at that specific time. And it, it does matter. It does make a difference. I'm sorry if you can't find your time, but again, you may be able to find it. You may be able to find it. You may, maybe didn't try hard enough yet. <laughs> I have hope for you. Like if you want it, I hope you get it. Maybe even just pray for the time to show up to you and you'll see the same time over and over on the clock, you know, every day for a whole year. And you'll be like, okay, let's try that. Who knows? Like you could get the answer. I'm sure you could in some other way <laughs> if you really wanted it. And I've seen crazier things manifest and reflect back from the hologram after requesting it. So for example, my little sister, I don't think has her birth time, but she might, I don't think they do have it. So she's the anomaly. I can't do her chart. <laughs> a lot of us don't have their birth times, but this is becoming a new thing. Everyone being born now, every parent is now deliberately making sure they have their birth time of the child so they can accurately do their chart that's just becoming a thing. I'm just telling you culturally, if you haven't noticed that yet, that's what I've seen. So yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Thank you, CJ, for coming to the class live. Thank you all again. I don't know how many times I have to thank you, but you know me, I would sit here and thank you all day long up and down because I'm just, I love what I do and I'm grateful to have that feedback that get to do this with some of you. So without further ado, I think we're going to end this call. We're going to end this class. We're going to close this portal. I invite you again to message me on Instagram, Telegram, Twitter. It's not Twitter anymore, but you know what I mean. You can message me directly through my website, ascensiondiaries.com. There's a message button there, the little pop-up message button. Message me, ask me anything, email me ascensiondiaries at gmail.com if that's your most archaic way of communicating email me and then message me that you emailed me even like, I don't mind poke me, prod me, give me the information any way you need to. I will find it. If I don't see it, or you think I didn't see it, send it again. It's totally fine. I'm not annoyed by you. I just want to be a happy, healthy communication hub and education facilitator <laughs> in our community the best that I can. So with that being said, I will see you on the next video, the next project. I will be messaging all the Patreon members this recording, of course, and the future plans, which I have a few fun ideas for the next couple of weeks. So I can't wait to see you with those. Onward we go. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> have a great night. <laughs>